Welcome to another Legacy Brew Pub video. Today we're going to be playing the thing I always play, Black Red Reanimator. I have a bit of a different list here. It's something I've been playing around. It's a fatty list sideboard, so there is no uh, archetype of endurance. There's only one Sarah's Emissary in the main. Um, I have a second Archon in the sideboard, and uh, maybe we'll see if it's good or not. You know, good for Surgical, good for Bajuka Bog. What have you. I'm only playing one Grief. I've backed down to one. I was having my heyday in the sun playing three, and I just didn't like it too much. I have three Thoughtseize in the main. I actually really like going back up to three Thoughtseize. It feels good. Been having moderate success with the deck lately. I've been working forever, and I just recently stopped, so I can start grinding a little bit. I didn't get to play Eternal Weekend. I saw that one reanimator player did pretty okay. I might play his list. It seems really weird. I placed, I think, two or three Magus of the Moon in the sideboard. Such a hot take. Uh, but for now, I'm going to be playing this. Um, just a little bit of a forewarning. I'm not a professional player. So if you see me misplay, shout it out. Uh, make fun of me. But just know that it'll happen. And when it does happen, it's going to feel real bad. Uh, it's going to be visceral. It's going to hit really, really, really hard. So sit back, enjoy, watch, uh, see how it how it goes through the uh, through the Legacy League things. All right, we are here. We're playing against a guy who is a card game addict. Oh, oh boy, he was interested in some brews. Um, so should I keep this hand? Uh, three, five, this guy's cool. So I decided to keep this one. It isn't a guarantee turn two, uh, but it is a, uh, kind of a turn three. We'll see how reactive I can be. Okay. So this guy is actually playing a brew. Uh, this looks like Armageddon stacks. If I had to guess. Uh, or a white stacks kind of build. Uh, that's what I would name here in the blind. Grief. I'm going to go ahead and consider what I should be doing. Possible plays. Badlands and Tomb. Grief. Probably un Unmask and Dark Ritual. We're not in danger of dying or losing. I'm just going to go to discard. I can't imagine he does anything real good like. We only have like a roughly so 16 cards on our top deck that we are looking for. The 12 reanimate spells and then four faithless looting spells. Sometimes you just draw exactly what you're looking for and it's great. Could actually just cast grief here. Is that any good? So I want three five mana floating. Cast grief. I'm not a two mana floating. No, I, then I wouldn't be able to entomb if he had some sort of interaction. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what he's got. Last zone. Second, Sorry, me thinking into the sideboard since he's an Urza Saga deck, he's going to be an artifact based kind of. Right, and then we just win next turn. I'm not sure what he can do. Archon and Gristlebrand on turn two is tough. She's real tough. I actually built a stack deck a couple years ago, but it was just too slow. But I wonder if Urza Saga like can increase its speed by a lot. Let's see if I had my uh, second Archon, I could just win here. I 
I wonder what you can tutor up for a one. That's real good. This is kind of the perfect reanimator hand. He should probably concede rather than give us more information. Yeah, Armageddon stacks. Totes, totes my goats, my boats. It's going to bring in all my artifact hate. Uh, Serenity is important. Just in case he does play Land of the Void. Show and tell is going to be greedy. And I'm going to go down one because I don't think lands are going to be a resource that I'm going to have available to me. Well, I'm going to bring it back in because I think ensnaring bridge is going to be part of the plan here. So I might cut in this grief for sure. Serious emissary for sure. Go down two chancellor effects. Maybe down one unmask here. I kind of want to only have five removal effects, but I think the sixth might be good for later in the game if I make it later in the game. I don't think Chancellor is going to be too good. I just do that. That. That seems not bad. Yeah, let's try it. Armageddon stacks. This is a fun deck. Oh. I'll keep this. We'll see what he does. Uh. The difficulty in Armageddon's decks is they're probably going to be playing some sort of Wasteland Ghost Quarter package. Uh, so if we get too greedy with our land, um, they're just going to waste us out. All right, so he went Tormod's Crypt, go, uh, which is just fine. I'm going to go Polluted Delta go. Unfortunately, this Urza Saga will pop off by the time I get to three mana to wear tear it. So, unless we draw a Lotus Petal. If we draw a Lotus Petal, then we can both wear tear and uh, be fine. And kill both the Tormod Script and the Urza Saga. Um, I don't think I'm going to fetch up here. There we go. All right, so he could be palming a uh, like a surgical kind of card, a fairy macabre or a surgical extraction. So I only have a few creatures. I'm going to bend both of these. I just play slow. I don't see any point in playing fast. Make your little construct, little construct, little mecha warrior. So our villain played out Crucible of the Worlds and is replaying his Urza Saga. Savage. Skirt. So he still has that one card in hand, and we're not quite sure what it is. If I had a Faithless Looting again, I could Chalice on Zero. That's actually not terrible, but Chalice on One would be better. Hmm. Okay. He's going to slam. We can pop the Chalice with uh, our wear here. 
Serenity off the top would feel good. His one card in hand is concerning me. He only has access to two mana. But he hasn't expedition mapped either. And he binned Ancient Tomb for the Mox Diamond. So I can't help but wonder what he's got. And I think it's some sort of surgical effect, which is fine if we can entomb with Exhum on the stack and we can get our Archon. Oh shit, is it actually just Armageddon? Smokestack. That is, uh, that is terrifying. That was his one card in hand. So thankfully we don't have to sacrifice anything. See, it's fair. It's fair magic. I'm trying to think of what he can get with his, uh, expedition map. I'm going to get Archon here. I'm going to make him sacrifice this construct. And uh, so there is there is a really there's a good way and a bad way of stacking smoke stacks. So our guy isn't our guy doesn't suck. He's good. He can pop expedition map for like a utility land. I don't know what that would be. Make Maze of it. It doesn't help. Um, wasteland, that's good. So I'm going to go down to three permanents and play. Chalice trigger. Thankfully, the game remembered the chalice trigger. Yeah. Replay of Wasteland next turn. So I'll go down to that permanent oh you son of a okay that was a lucky draw that was a luck luck lucky draw he could bend chalice here I don't know what he would get um he should well, I guess bringing smokestack. God, actually, I don't know. So does the trigger go on the stack, or is it the active player's triggers trigger first? I, I don't know these things. Like, so what I'm wondering is when smokestack triggers on my upkeep with serenity, what happens? Replays wasteland, takes out my scrub land. The true scrub. Okay, so the stack. I want that to result. Oh, yep, so. Jesus. Wait, I don't want to select that. Deselect that. I have to sacrifice two permanents. I guess I just sacrifice Serenity and Swamp. Does that trigger still happen? This is so crazy. It's kind of cool. GG's. Back for the next one. And we're back. With uh, Lucy Goosey Keep, huh? So, Cyrus CG sounds like a Doomsday player. And if he is a Doomsday player, then this hand just uh, slaps uh, myself in the face and then I lose. Uh, if he's any other sort of player, might have a chance. God, do I keep it? This might be the riskiest biscuit keep of all time. I'll keep it. We're on the draw. What can go wrong? Just don't be a blue player. Be any other color player. Hey. Okay. See? Cowards don't win games. All right? Well, now I feel bad. Uh, okay. So there is a non-zero chance that uh, he has endurance. Okay, he had Endurance. Archon of Valor's Reach. So this is the Elves with Endurance and Archon of Valor's Reach. Right. Well, now we're pretty dead in the water. I led on Underground Sea for no apparent reason. No reason at all.
said that cowards don't win games. Uh, warriors don't always win games either, kids. He has all four mana available to him now, so if he has endurance, natural order, you know, the whole rigmarole. Looks like he does, and then shows us progenitus or whatever, crater hoof, crater hoof daddy. All right, well, normally we're supposed to win that about 100-0. We didn't that time. Sometimes that's just how it be. I actually don't know what the elves sideboard is nowadays, so I'm going to take a second to Google it. All right, so I Googled it, and it turns out it's mostly uh, two Leyline of the Voids, which I don't understand at all. Deafening Silence is in the fray. Uh, endurance, all kinds of really fun stuff. So I will bring in show and tell. I'm going to bring out two exhumes. Uh, I like Sarah's emissary on creature. Um, I'm not a big fan of thoughts easier, so I might even bring in two Arcana cruelties uh, just in case we are missing one for some reason. Sand's got some sauce, so we'll see if he uh, decides to break the Chancellor seal right away. Basic swamp go. So thankfully we do have uh dose in tombs. I don't know why I have the bad art for in tomb. I should change that. Um let's see, he'll into next end step. So he I'm gonna get an archon of cruelty here. All right. Um, so that worked out. I don't think being more reactive with Thoughtsies is going to do us any good. I do like our show and tell package. I do like everything we got going on. I, I might kind of move, do like a, that kind of move. One Chancellor out. And I'll be looking for like a show and tell. I, I would be happy with that. Let's see. So he begins with seven cards in hand. That makes me think he's got a ley line effect. Uh, maybe I'll mulligan. in. Uh, this is cute. Could work with this. Put back an anime dead and faithless into something, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, maybe I'll mulligan. in. All right. I do like this. I'm going to keep this. Send that. Uh, what do we, we get rid of Archon here? And Tomb, pretty much, it's the same as Faithless Looting. Like, all these are kind of samey. I'll get rid of Unmask. Right, so he didn't have the Leyline effect. He had the Thoughtseize effect. Do -do 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 takes Archon. Take, takes Archon? No, nope. takes Loot, Scoot, and Boogie. Womp womp. Well, if you took Faithless Looting and I drew this nice Faithless Looting, <laughs> I'm just going to take it. <laughs> All right. Entomb does combo with uh, Exhum, so if we... Drew Exhum, I'd probably just wait until I got a third land. I don't know. Green Sun, X equal one. Elvish Reclaimer, that's the long run. So I'm, I'm willing to believe he doesn't have anything in hand. Did we get there? Nope. Dang it. All right. So we're not completely dead in the water. That's good. And this one Elvish Reclaimer, I don't know how that's going to help super much here. It is reasonable to bring in... Uh, 
Okay. All right, Batman. I'm starting to dig it. It is reasonable to bring in Echoing Truth. I, I think the Goat might actually be doing that, but against some decks that run Elvish Reclaimer, but I don't know if it's Elves. But if, I don't think it's unreasonable to bring in Echoing Truth. Well, these are all just bangers, squad. Like, what up, you two fam? Uh, so he's not advancing his board. He's going to go get a Dryad Arbor. I think? I don't know. I'll just wait. This one is for all the marbles. This is match number three, so. Now, guys, Cradle will net him some amount of mana. Why didn't you trade out the Bayou? Uh, I don't know what's going on here. Oh, your God. Can we do it? Yep, so we're going to let him do his dango. Jukabob resolves. Tomb. So Sarah's emissary naming creature is going to be good. This is a this is a tough draw seven here. Sarah's emissary, so. He's got three. He could go get the hoof. I don't like that. Hoof gives him trample. Oh, we got, we're missing one gristle dad. Gotta love Archon of Cruelty against Elves. Just sets them back into the Stone Age. Show and tell, you're so good. Okay. My screen is getting very, very crowded right now. Natty Order is out. Alright, so... Are we safe to a top deck natural order? Um, guys, Cradle produces two, three. Uh, oh, he just concedes. All right. Well, good game, Cyrus. He's a good guy. Welcome back. We have won the die roll. And I will not keep this pile of trash. Ha, this is also a pile of trash. Why is everything trashy? On the draw, this hand would be perfect. Uh, I would I would keep with uh, extreme prejudice, but not so much on the play. All right, this one I can keep. Oh, God, this one's a tough keep. And our opponent has seven cards in hand, so anything we need. A discard spell, we have seven of those. Faithless looting, we have four of those. So it's 11, and in tomb, we have four. So that's 15 cards total off the top of the deck. 
Yeah, I'll mulligan again. This is the same but worse. I'll mulligan again. I'll keep this. Oh, cancel. Boop. 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 Dawn. Oh, ah, I accidentally hit cancel. I meant to hit was done. Polluted Delta, go. I may or may not be staring down the barrel of a Grizzlebrand on turn two. Well, he had a pause in the draw step, so that's not good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab the Swamp. I suppose I don't have to entomb now. I probably could just wait. Like, ain't nothing going on. You know, if you didn't keep a hand with force in it, you know. I'm guessing no force. All right, there we go. All right, now dig for your force. So if he keeps with ponder, you might might have his force. But the latest uh, blue card strategy versus reanimator is to uh, counter both the enablers and the payoffs, usually. So you often see him like countering both in tomb and faithful saluting. So that's that's fun and different. Okay, so they chose not to shuffle and they played out a lotus petal, which leads me to believe that both show and tell and holding up um spell pierce. Uh, but all we need to do is draw a land to follow up. Also, we can put in anime dead if they play show and tell, so that's cool. Uh, we'll see how good they are as a show and tell player. No, I am not going to counter that. They had the draw step pause, though. It's so weird. It's the ultimate fake out. They caught me being cute. They spent another turn cantripping. And they scry two cards to the bottom of their library. Uh, Dark Ritual. That's cool. What happens if we cast that? What happens if we cast that targeting Gristlebrand? Oh, that's nice. That's cool. Ah. I'm I'm drawing another set of cards. I'm gonna thought he's targeting them though. Yep. Get rid of your payoff. We uh correctly guessed that it was show and tell. We have, uh, so we have no Lotus Petal here. Uh, I do want either Archon of Cruelty or Chancellor of the Annex. One of those two is going into the graveyard and I'm going to reanimate it. Um, I have to figure out which one though. And so let's see, they have two, three, four mana for sneak attack. They have uh, four mana for show and tell. I think I'm going to put in uh, Archon of Cruelty because when I swing, they can't do anything with that attack trigger. That's going to be my... Uh, I probably shouldn't have played uh, Underground C of all cards. But what are you going to do? So they're going to discard their probably redundant show and tell here. Oh, snow covered island. So they want all their show and tell. So if, if they show in, uh, you know, a fatty or whatever, we. I still get to swing with the... Okay, they just quit. All right, cool. Show and TZ. Uh, normally, show and tell sides out of their show and tell package and just goes all in on sneak attack. Sometimes they bring in that creature, Arcane Artisan. Most of the times, it's just 
all in on sneak attack, turbo sneak attacks. Uh, Sarah's emissary is not going to be good because Emerald Cool doesn't care if with this annihilator trigger. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to side into our own show and tell package here. <laughs> Do like that, and I kind of like it's a toss up between these two. I'm gonna consult my sideboard guide. Sideboard guide, huh? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and go in like this. Uh, we got <clears throat> Sarah's emissaries out, silence, Sarah's emissaries out, silence is in. Let's take it. Let's get it. That was a mulligan to three, team. Ooh. So the ultimate sass with reanimator versus show and tell is turn one, reanimate their gristle brand. I don't know if it's worth it to go all in here. Maybe we'll keep. Oh, again, this is such a borderline keep. Uh. We got a lot of turns. We got a lot of turns, fam. I'm going to try it. Try it for science. Such a borderline keep. I'm not going to unmask. Well, we'll see what happens. I need a really good black card that I just want to pitch with unmask. That's what I need. Oh. Well, that's not cool. We didn't have a contingency for uh, turn one Graft Digger's Cage. No. No, we did not. Well, I don't want to tell him that, like, I don't have the answer to Graft Digger's Cage, so I'm going to, like, keep playing it out, I think. He's got to get... Quite a lot of cooperative draws here. Uh, there's a non-zero chance of drawing a bunch of Lotus or uh, Dark Rituals and just casting Archonic Cruelty. So I'm going to prioritize my lands. A lot of draw go from this opponent. <clears throat> I'm going to unmask next turn. I could unmask for moving in tomb, but we'll see how that works out. It's turn five of draw go from our, from our villain here. All right, they got rid of one of their forces. Looks like they uh, they forced just to save on hand size. All right, we're getting there. Two, four, five, six mana. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, if we find a dark ritual and a fatty, we are live. And they're back up to seven cards in hand. All right, dark ritual. Now we just need a payoff and probably some more discard effects too. So they managed to get sneak attack in play. Uh, they do have a fatty. They don't have a red source yet, it looks like. They pitched their uh, Simeon Spirit Guide to make this happen. Harambe died for their sins. All right, so we're dead to them drawing a land. They drew a land. That's not cool. It's very rude. Okie dokie. So we know our opponent is bringing in some amount of Grab Digger's Cage. Probably just the one. We're going to go back up to four Chancellors. We're going to be... I don't know if I want all Wear Tears. For sure want one. I don't know how I feel about all of the Silences right now. All right, so I'm going to go in like this. Uh, four Chancellors, two Wear Tears. We're going to be a little bit more reactive and a little bit less proactive. Uh, let's see how it works out. 
Right, this is a turn one Chancellor of the Annex. Don't think is good enough to win. Should we should we go all in, fam, on the turn one Chancellor? That's gonna be five, four draw steps. No, too slow. This is better. This is better by uh, what is known as a country mile. I'm gonna get rid of one of these faithless scootin' boogies. We're land. We're a bit, bit away from developing. And if I need to in a pinch, I would gladly toss this entomb to this unmask. All right, so they add the turn one graph diggers. Followed by what looks like a turn three. One, two, three, sneak attack. All right, cool. So, as they say, the heat is on! See what happens. I put this on the bottom of my library. All right, exhume fuego fam. Oh, okay. Uh, I was doing something dumb and something dumb happened because of it. So, god damn it. I didn't want God, so upset. All right, that was a misplay. I don't know why I was doing that. I was just uh, moving cards around for my own sake and uh, I misplayed and it sucks and we might lose because of it. Probably would have discarded one of those two for one cards. Jesus Christ. I thought about entombing at the end step, but I was like, if we draw anything other than exhume, I would be happy with that. Uh, and we drew that one, that one exact card that we needed. This is uh, now turning into a scrappy, little scrap heap. So, God, they get Gristlebrand back. They would draw 14 cards right away. They would go down to four life. So if they crack a fet fetch land to go, they could go down to three life and then we could kill them with Archon of Cruelty. So that's a possible out. They have Ancient Tomb. So if they tap Ancient Tomb, that helps us out a lot too. Oh, yeah. We're getting scrappy, fam. I'm going to see what happens. That brainstorm set him up from here to this outside of the universe. Yeah, we're getting scrappy. I don't, I don't know who wins here. Uh, it's probably not us. I don't know. We have to discard, so... Uh, I think there is a lot of room to say that I shouldn't have discarded that Gristle Brand. I could have like started taking away sneak attacks. Oh, I oh well, he would take priority on anything, I guess. So if he draw, if he does this again, okay. So now he's in the danger zone. I don't know. That's an aggressive. Like, if he forces, that's so aggressive. All right. So, here's what I'm thinking I got Dark Rit, Entomb, Animate Dead. All of that is for Archon of Cruelty. So, all I have to do is just start resolving discard effects. 
Oh, Jesus, do I only have a couple black cards? It looks like I do. And so we played right into our trap card, and it's up to us not to lose. There, it, I probably should have played out my land and Lotus Petal just so that I don't fold the days here. Oh, Jesus, do we just win? Does he have an instant? He has Brainstorm, so I need to take the Brainstorm from him also. It doesn't matter if I unmask or not. Yep. Oh, we actually got there. We uh we snuck a win from the Jaws of Defeat here. Jesus, did we get lucky? GG's opponent. Um, so I think I'm gonna cut this video short here uh because it's now an hour long so um it's it's over an hour long it's almost two hours long i think as i'm editing my soft with my software here i'm at an hour and a half and that doesn't include this round so i'm gonna go ahead and, and cut it short here a little bit um overall this version of the build that i've been working on i think is pretty cute um i do think that there was uh so if we recap our matches, we 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 beat elves, and when we beat elves, there was an instance where they had two endurances, and we still won um, due to the strength of Entomb Exhum, uh, that little wombo combo. We beat Show and Tell uh, on a mull of three, and we beat them with a Gristlebrand to play, but they were very, they were very aggressive, and they forced a will to. Lotus Petal, like, that's for sure a misplay, but overall, the strength of this deck, I still think, is slamming. If you were to build it, and you wanted to take out a wear tear for a shenanigans, that's totally reasonable. Uh, to put a second emissary in, uh, I personally don't favor it, but it's still good. Um, I didn't see any place where Echoing Truth is good, but that's mostly good against, like, lands decks and stuff like that. Um... Silence is a banger. We didn't get to see any silence come in, but still still one of the best cards. I like my one grief. Overall, I think the power of this deck is still gangsta. So if you liked uh, this video, you know, be sure to give me a little subscribe. It uh, would greatly help out.